car release before today's game. In the live ratings, right? Live ratings. Okay, yeah. It's a front. 2800. It's a lot at stake. I mean, there's a lot at stake every day here in Norway Chess, of course, but uh, that would be a nice pride. I'm feeling we're going to see Ding going for the tank here. He's still got one hour on the clock, but a lot of the damage has already been done. It's just missing that damage. Uh, trying desperately to get the rest of the people. Very much an uphill struggle, and between <laughs> now, the position You're right. really is like so uncomfortable that even even if Ding was in a better shape, it would still be a difficult position. Knowing how much of a struggle everything has been, oh. multiplied difficult to hold this. Go 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 go! My heart is melting. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 guys! Be careful. Yeah. Show me game. your spot. And, uh, sorry to Hold make that it. call, but it's just a call. No! Hold on. He is one of the best human beings ever to do in the history of the game, right? And he is not even. <laughs> like, literally, like, that's, it's hard to watch. Um. And uh, we will we will certainly come back, and I know fans want to follow it. It's a top level chess game. He's a professional, and many many fans are far enough for more, perhaps more than any other player here in our in our different chats. But that's tough. We're gonna let Ding Weaver figure it out. jump to that game um constantly evolving really quick play actually the player's already a move 24 <laughs> one of the most developed games this round and, uh, i got it video earlier we saw the move queen to f5 as predicted uh, it feels like uh, going into an end game fabi may be slightly reluctant but it does uh, after the queen trade correct the black pawn structure also really nice that the black pawn covers the e4 square so white's pawn can never kick the black knight away we saw the queen side unlocked uh, uh, a trade here and the white rook tried to use the a file <laughs> Black Knight recentralizing itself, different circuit this time. I've got to say, in practical terms, I think Black's got great chances. Especially if Black gets two more moves. If Black King comes towards the center, uh, maybe you defend the G pawn first, maybe you shift it forward. Um, then only Black can be better to be able to leave the board. But for now, what's Prag aiming for? Some ideas of getting a rook to the seventh rank? And he's done that actually in the light board. Ah, he has. Yep. Pardon me. Yeah, rook to seven. Good move. Uh, that's the thing with uh, these end games. Uh, long term, maybe favors black. So short term, black needs to be energetic. Are you okay? Yeah, energetic with his body language as well. The swinging his back, and that's usually a confident Prague, as from what our body language expert can tell. Guilty as charged. I was literally about to point that out, but you've got my job now. Yeah, no, I. And I said <laughs> <laughs> activity is kind of the name of the game. For the conversation for the good theme in chess and it's an instructive one you've got a positional edge for black with this two on one and we use that term to describe what is what is permanent that's kind of what the word means right what is permanent about the position what weaknesses can you kind of not undo or take back black is forever playing with an extra pawn over there but the activity that white has the rook on the seventh rank and really that bishop on e5 was hitting g7 together the bishop for an exchange and relieve white's pressure but even if it's exchanged, white then gets the knight into the center, and knights are knights are tricky beasts, right? That knight is hopping in to c6. You've got all kinds of other weird stuff going on, and uh, and yeah. By <laughs> now, because if black had traded on the last move, the white bishop retreats all the way back. Just when you think you win, that that ninja bishop is hiding all the way across the universe. But now black is threatening to take. So there is a, is a concrete decision for the board, double them on the seventh rank, like the seven. Kind of my idea to keep the pressure there, or do you switch to the D file? But either way, I just wanted to point out that White's initiative is is enough probably with best play. It's why the engine thinks this is a roughly level position, right? Like if White keeps the initiative, you should be balanced. But 
one small slip, what happens with the initiative is because it's based on temporary stuff, it goes away, and then those concrete advantages always spell the day in chess. And that's, that's literally the, whatever that is, that is the game of chess. Often you have one side playing for something that's a little more positional and long term, and one side trying to make sure they keep the pressure now. Um, and uh, those are the chairs that the players sit in. But Frog sitting firmly in the initiative chair needs pressure. Fabi sitting firmly in the if he could just simplify it, he would lose it. But you were right. Sorry, go ahead. I love how the organizers. He organizes us them to sign up. They didn't ask us to sign our chairs. What's up with that? It's not as valuable that we are sitting in these chairs. No one will want to buy them after the event for charity. They might. They might try to burn them. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, Danny. <laughs> uh, metaphor. Still a metaphor, Danny. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure whose seat I'd rather be in right now, but Frag, he's quite strong at these end games for someone at such a young age, and um, I bet he's going to continue playing energetic chess here. The White Rook in the near future, after dealing with the tension on the A file, can as well go play. It looks like he's got enough to keep the balance. Not sitting in his chair right now. Maybe he's in the confessional. That's uh, a recipe for success for him a couple of days ago. I wonder if he'll re try to repeat that trick. Uh, maybe one to touch back in on a bit later. Um, Armageddon though, maybe like Liana. I think it's likely. I wouldn't say it's anytime close. I think this is a actually a very rich position for how it is well into basically an end game with uh, not too many pieces, especially after like potentially there's a potential there's a piece trade on F6. We're gonna have even less pieces on the board after the next few moves. But because of the structural differences, because of the wow. activity of the pieces. Oh my god! <laughs> quite a bit. Um but possibly draw would be the prediction for the result. Do you agree, Danny? I think most likely. For sure, although I'm going to give some more credit to Prague again, because we talked a lot about the concrete advantages explained why Fabio like I mean. I want to say again that the other thing that can happen with overextended pawns, David, either they become a pass pawn, or maybe somehow white pawns uh -oh. to eliminate both of them for one, right? If white gets to both the B and C for the B3 pawn because the rooks are active exactly, then we look at the other side of the board and doing the exercise ann and i talked about earlier in the show how to get better you have to visualize well if this happens what right this is a four on three end game where black has already extended the f knights have the potential in their end game to do nasty things so it's actually not that crazy that white's long term is, is, is maybe better than the you know, there's a But I do agree. We've said enough. We've, we've set enough drama here for a game that is most likely ending in peace. But um, we'll come back to it in a little bit um, after Fabiano just bombs here. And, and, uh, we get right, the here, hold your phone up. Hold the phone up and look. Didn't we do this in the <laughs> My thought was, okay, I guess if you trade and play rook b7, black will play b4, and then black has rook a3 coming in some positions. But So it's, okay, it, yeah, it's interesting, right? And you may be right, David. If Bobby can make a pass pawn work, then that concrete advantage has become one where black is pushing. But if those pawns get over... <laughs> Oh, nice. Oh, big compromise structure there. So, okay, let's leave these two to battle out this endgame. Yes, we're expecting a trade of rooks and then further battle. But we'll report on it uh, from the bird's eye view where we can. <laughs> 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 I'm curious. Oh, okay. We will. We will just update on this final 
smoke of uh, frag or pineapple now. Maybe we could just play out real quickly the line that Danny mentioned that after the trade, uh, the D7 rook needs to be somewhere most likely to stay but it's funny, there's like, is there nice spot there? I mean, what happens in these types of, oh, hurt my back. Uh, what happens in those types of positions where we get, we get a, a different type of race, right? Black is racing on the king side, black is racing on the king side, not a checkmate attack. We often think of races as kings on opposite sides of the board and pawn storms, but like, this is fascinating, right? Rook A3, knight E6, you will be free. Like, white wins G7 and also gets mating that idea along the way. So, you, know, you may not even be able to take it free because of Rook G7 and Rook G7. Yeah. Um, so, hey, this is... I also know I'm having fun in this game. I know it's simplifying out. Maybe it's that insurance card I have where I know I've got... Uh, I know I've got protection. I've got Armageddon. So even if this draws, you know, we have excitement. But, um... But I think, I think this game has a... We agree for any in-game aficionado. This is one of the more exciting uh, of them all. So, um, okay, maybe time to zoom out, though. Yeah, we, we will. Just a second. I just got told we've got a Magnus Carlsen confessional. Actually, we're not going to go to that right now. We're going to have it at the break for our subscribers. So um, if, you've, uh, if you've got Prime, now's the time. If you're watching on Twitch, if you're a subscriber on any channel, go ahead and do it. Avoid... Avoid ad free. A lot of people don't know, by the way, if they subscribe, <laughs> it's as good as going gold on chess.com, where you don't have to have ads on chess.com. So subscribe, and uh, you can connect your accounts. Um, and obviously, you can be saying a lot of these interviews and, and, and content at the break. So more than you, but subscribe because we have a Magnus Carlson discussion when we go to our break. Which will be in about 10 minutes. So you've got some time to do it. All right, let's check out. Hey there, Rue. Hey there, big guy. <laughs> What's your nickname? <laughs> um, D Dog. D Dog? Oh, oh I got that. <laughs> big D. Howler. Howler. I got it. Howler? I like Howler. I like that. Committed many Howlers on the chessboard in my time. Yeah. Maybe not right now. Look at the game with Vaishali and Leighton J. That's interesting, for sure. Oh, so uh, she went for the, the trade that we suggested, but she also went for grabbing the pawn and trading it for the mm -hmm. pawn. Mm -hmm. Levi's chair has just subscribed too. See, this is a de the day of chairs. The day of chairs, Levi's chair. Thank you. Um, <laughs> will be tough for her to play against I think for the rest of the game. So David, you, you have the mouse, you're in control. will likely continue to change. Oh my god. Um, and then maybe back to Magnus where a lot has been clarified. Um, a lot of tension evaporating. Um, so a quick check-in on uh, <laughs> the way chess right now. Anna, um, I was going to say impatient decision from Vaishali maybe, but she's clearly got something in mind with this queen exchange. Yeah, I think she she calculated it. She took quite some time before she even started the whole sequence of moves with the six c5. So she clearly has invested quite some time and energy in making this decision, and she <coughs> potentially wanted to force this queen trade. Whoa, so whoa, whoa, was her Brian. idea at the end of the line. <laughs> is obligatory to take or can the the to be do you want to trade queens as black? Is a question. Yeah, I think I would be reluctant. <laughs> I got that here. on um, video. Some calculations always needed, of course. <laughs> and, and like you said, black has two options. It's 50-50. Sure and if you keep everything. queens on the board, yeah. you have to calculate, I guess, what happens if white starts grabbing pawns. I'm not sure which pawn um, the black bishop would be attacked either way. Um, so this would be a temporary pawn sacrifice. Um, I mean, from strategic uh, point of view. Right. <laughs> 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 
knight because of a bad bishop here. It's a good knight versus bad bishop scenario, but also because there's a clear target. Um, the isolated pawn in the center long term is going to be uh, a bit of an issue. Uh, I think this is last resort territory. If you keep, keep the pins on, you should keep the pins on. Just, uh, making Jay Go. calculate how well he does. Because, uh, if you might be getting a pawn back in the center of tricky Danny. Yeah. But I, I, I definitely like Vaishali's position, like you said, for all the all the long-term advantage reasons, right? The positional reasons, the dominant knight in the center, weak pawns. Um, feels like a position that's easier <laughs> for white to play, right? <laughs> Whether she converts it and makes it happen or goes on to get there or not, I, I don't want to announce the results for her just yet, but it feels like this position is going to be much harder for black to win. Um, and... Uh, and yeah, I expect Lady and Jade to try to keep the queens on the board because of what you said, but I still like white. Yeah. <laughs> Since we said that, oh. we thought, okay, I'm totally wrong, and she decides the endgame is okay. Um, I'm surprised. I thought it was quite an unpleasant <laughs> ending. I wonder if she's calculated something super concrete, like, oh, no, no, is there no. a way to play rook <laughs> fc8 with a tempo? Because remember, black... Black is hoping white plays a move like c4, because then you get to exchange your weak isolated pawn, right? So just remember, that's kind of the key point, is black can put pressure. You're hoping white plays c4, which is white to play rook fc1. And is there something concrete there for black to play like rook c5, David, to, to kind of stop you before your rook a5 plan? As I say it, I see d4 for white, so I'm not sure, but... Um, Oh. Maybe rook c7 <laughs> even, and, you know, the bishop just guard squares and... <laughs> if I can bring enough pressure to the c file quickly, right, I can force you to play c4, what happens there? Well, we're just exchanging. And so, as much as for us it looks like maybe white has an edge, perhaps she's tried to calculate something. I like your rook fc8 maybe first, but uh, a5, b5, a4. Mm -hmm. uh, try to throw it forward. Um, again, it's what we referred to earlier in the uh, practice. Then try to accelerate the play. So still within the realms of... Uh, Quality, roughly, Anna, but um, I think we all pick one. <laughs> no! Go, Jay! I like it, and, and then I like your plan too. I like our plans together. If our plans come together, they can make a good chess move. friends hanging out and um more chess games to look at where to go next <laughs> Without the queens on the board, now Black can start thinking about getting his king in the game and those things. So let's head over there. Magnus Carlsen versus Oliver. Uh, the last time we were there, these are the second and third place people in the standings, respectively. Ali Reza with a half point, more than Carlsen. Uh, oh my, my glasses are right, Take it away. Where we at? Yeah, let's just do a quick recap of the last few moves because uh, there's a lot hidden beneath the surface Wait. here. Um, we left it after black off the oh. trade, and I did see that future chat saying, why can't white double? Uh, just double the black holes. Oh. Uh, that did indeed happen. Queen takes queen, <laughs> take queen three to protect the pawn on A4. And initially, I was thinking this is just one-way traffic. Magnus is going to maybe push his F pawn forward, bring the white king, race it towards the center. Um, at the right moment, you might even trade bishops, but um, black has... More than Making it! Normally we say the oh, there he is. Two weaknesses. Black does have. How are you doing? He's pushing me! Oh! I'm going back! No!
sure should actually coming with the idea of b5 and trading of those pawns as well as the bishop so he would have landed like in the rook and the enemy. I, if magnus I, had to play c4 I, I don't know if there were any other options but it, it seems that he evaluated the other options and decided that as ugly as it is to push the pawn to c4 he has to go for it and lock in his bishop d5 though will open up uh, the bishop of white but also will free black from this isolated weakness and uh, the moves are becoming simpler. I agree. I think it's becoming simpler. <laughs> 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 if you end up simplifying anything off of the queen side, despite the doubled and bad pawns on the king side, that will not be enough for, for white to win. So I'm trying to calculate something concrete if there's like a series of tempo moves. Obviously, if you can play with e7 now, we were talking about maybe that's key before black gets king of fate. And at least there, if black takes on c4, you take the bishop, and you're going to be right, preventing, preventing black from playing d5 and trading further. So, rookie 7 is perhaps an important move to play. Likely, it was the kind of thing that Ali Reza was calculating. Otherwise, he might have just blitzed d5. And what happens there if rookie 7, if, if black doesn't want to take c4, how else do you deal with the threat of rook c7, as you already highlighted while I was talking about the DC4 line. So let's analyze this just real quick. I feel like this is the right move. Okay. That's like a very good question. Anyway, and just kind of ah, it bit me. Oh my god, it bit me. It does look like he's I'm not bleeding, but yeah. will win a pawn at least temporarily. Um, the second thing is what if I just want to Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's interesting. Your idea of sacrificing the pawn is a I have to leave. During his confessional, because apparently Magnus has a mid confessional realization. We've been talking about the fact that the players, when they talk out loud, so last chance, I guess, for subscribers to see it. We're going to go to a break. You're going to want to see Magnus Carlson's confessional. Again, what does he realize in the middle of talking out loud? We're going to find out. And round five of 2024 Norway Chess and Norway Chess Women will continue when we get back. Honestly, came to the game today and I was just not feeling up for it at all. Um, just a little off, you know. Part of the reason, uh, I don't really know why. Um, also, I don't know why I played that line there. Yeah, I mean, I was intending something else. And I was like, yeah, I can't be bothered. So, just to try and play something solid, but I didn't really know it that well. And honestly, it felt from the opening that I wasn't remotely better um then i sort of woke up a little bit now um i have some hope that if he doesn't pr play precisely over the next 
few moves, I might get some chances to to win. Since now Queen C5 is a logical move, but then I think I'll take Bishop E5. Might be a little bit better. Um, I think what he should do now is Queen D5. Um, I have Queen C7, there's Queen D3, and I don't think there are any tactics for me. I'm um, gonna push A6 and. Wait! Uh, so. um, uh, uh, yeah, I was thinking I'll take uh, the Bishop E5. It's extremely solid. Cause also, the A4, uh, A4, like his pawns on the queen side are in the um, opposite color of his bishop, so, uh, and my opponent A4, so I think I But yeah, queen's a power of the so I think like a little bit more. Um, uh, I felt like a little bit more, so I just had to turn it up, so. Gives me a bit more energy as well. So I'm hopeful. Fun right here. And I'll pull it yeah, off the wall. Didn't look good. Okay. Oh, my hell. Thank you. 